So uh, we're gonna touch a bit on the mobile side of things. Uh, I could say that from my, my background I've been working in the mobile space for about seven years now. Kind of uh, doing initially a bit of uh, mobile Java development but uh, mostly business side of things in the past few years. And I, I think the mobile web is actually a rather big opportunity as, as Ryan also mentioned. Uh, the Juma. And just gonna run you through a few things that have been happening in the world and how mobile has been developing and then uh, some things that you might want to think about when actually designing websites because uh, it's, it's, it's not all about the desktop and lap laptops anymore. So let's start with a picture. <laughs> so it was actually, it was a few years ago, I guess five years or something like that ago when we had an argument uh, with a couple of good friends of mine, I was telling them that basically in a few years time actually the majority of the world will connect to internet by their mobile device. And I just clear out a lengthy argument, kind of uh, got also a bit of intense and the two guys, the two friends just wouldn't accept my view that majority of the world would actually connect to internet by mobile phone. They thought, that, yeah, in Africa if you have mobile phones you use them for calling, but for internet, you use PCs. You might have one PC in the village, but people are going to use it to access internet. And uh, I just didn't, <laughs> didn't agree with that. And uh, I, I think now, a few years afterwards, I think I have a, some uh, pretty good statistics that actually well, I was kind of right <laughs> in that sense. So currently in Africa, there are 500 million mobile subscribers. Of course, some of the phones are older like this, probably aren't that good for web browsing. But still, mobile is already the number one way to get online in Africa. So there are plenty of phones, of course, they just kind of keep drifting from the Western world, some of the older, a few years older fancy sales keep ending up to developing countries. So people are using them. There are very interesting services also uh, in South Africa, in Kenya very interesting mobile money services and many of the mobile services currently are based on SMS but the mobile internet usage is, is, is increasing very very rapidly and there are also pretty interesting affordable data plans that people are using and people might be even using a separate SIM card just for data because they get a cheaper uh, price of way and then they have another SIM card for voice calls but it's not only about Africa so in the meanwhile in Asia there are a lot of developing countries there, and also a lot of uh, very kind of IT-oriented countries like uh, Cor well, South Korea and uh, Japan. But there are already a lot of countries where actually the mobile penetration is actually over 100%. So people have multiple phones, actually lots of phones, lots of SIM cards. They are using data really heavily. Of course, Japan has been the leader in that sense. The mobile internet service in Japan, they are, I guess, they are kind of five, five years ahead from. Uh, any, anything else in the world, but also in, in other countries like China, Vietnam, it, it, data usage is, is just increasing all the time. And looking at the whole world, last year there were over 600 million new mobile subscribers. And basically, altogether in the world, there are now 4.3 billion mobile devices at the moment, out of which a bit over 1 billion are smartphones. And of course, the, the uh, smartphone rate is increasing really, really rapidly. So there will be more and more smartphones. And of course, you know, you've seen the stats that when people get a new smartphone, uh, it kind of translates into heavy data usage at the same time. It might be social networks, but it's also a lot more. And uh, I will get kind of uh, go further into that in a while. So mobile web is really grow, growing rapidly. Mobile web browsing is, is uh, of course, it's been running really bit small, but it's already in a few years, it's, it's been growing really, really rapidly. And it's already exceeding a lot of the, exceeding by a lot the more, the normal kind of desktop internet usage. And uh, Ryan stole this from me, but it's a very well-known Morgan Stanley stat that shows that, according to their estimate, by 2013, Actually, the mobile web usage across the world will actually surpass the desktop web usage. 
So it, it, it doesn't just mean that the developing countries will only use mobile phones, but it also means that a lot more guys in the West are actually also using daily their phones to browse the web. So this is a recent study from Google. They are already seeing it that last year, basically within the last year, the mobile search has quadrupled. And typically, this is a, these are stats from them. So it shows that uh, almost everybody using a smartphone has actually searched something, uh, or looked for local information when they're on the run. A lot of the guys have then taken action based on that to visit the local store or or uh, buy something nearby based on the information. And one more thing, so from from the smartphone users, about 50% of them use internet on their smartphone every day and multiple times typically. It's a bit higher in the US, it's still a bit lower, less than 3% in, in the Western countries, but that's the average rate. <laughs> and then looking at mobile commerce, so it, it's not just that you're looking for some certain information, you will actually also make purchases. So in 2010, the mobile e-commerce market was about, well, 3.4 billion US dollars, and that's expected to boom. It actually, uh, quite a, it's, it's going to be quite a lot more in just a few years. So already now, people are actually. I, I also read somewhere that uh, over actually about a third of the Americans have bought something online using their mobile phone. So I think that's uh, actually pretty astonishing. <coughs> But yeah, that's kind of the stats and that's kind of shows what's going on in the world. But then you might kind of ask, that, okay, so what? We have iDevices, they are, it, it was pretty well presented in the Apple keynote in 2007, that yes, this device can actually browse all websites. Well, at least if they don't have flash in them. But <laughs> let's say it, it can run all the websites, so you don't really need a separate kind of old mobile website that you might have done for WAP using some, uh, don't even remember anymore the uh, certain scripting language or the <coughs> language that used for WAP pages. But you need them because the device actually browses all websites and similar to iPad. So the question could be like, why is it you, why is it you actually care then? Because the new smart devices, they can browse the regular websites as well as uh, so smaller ones. But it's kind of a question that, yeah, it kind of works, or it may work, or then it might not work. It's kind of, it's almost there sometimes, but you don't, like, in pretty many cases, it's, it's just not the case. So you might be very well satisfied looking at your website on a desktop or a laptop. It's looking fine, there are a lot of information, you design it just the way you want it using some nice templates, has all the information that you think people want to see. There might be some community features on the front plates and some nice des description of overall, like what's, if it's a business site, like what, what the cafe is about. Let's use the cafe as an example. So they're probably saying something there like uh, how good their quality is and how great the atmosphere is and what the certain type of coffee from, uh, I don't know, from uh, Indonesia they are serving. And uh, lots of different things, and then you of course have the sub-menus so that people can go and check for something else, or they might have the search button. <coughs> but basically, when you go to mobile, then it might be a lot different. So yeah, you can kind of browse it, but in the end it kind of uh, goes then to the, actually, the design and the usage question. So what's actually the purpose of people browsing it? Typically, if you consider people on, like you're sitting in front of your computer, you might be in an office, you, with laptop, you might be even on your couch. But typically, if you have a big screen, you're typically sitting somewhere else than not on, on the couch. 
And it's kind of similar that uh, if you have your big screen computer, you probably don't gonna want, want to watch like 90 minute film on that because uh, you would go to the couch for that. You would want to sit there and just relax and have your coke and whatnot and just uh, watch some mind numbing good like action movie. <clears throat> but if you're on a computer, you actually want some kind of interactivity. So it's kind of a similar thing. But if you're on mobile, the use cases are typically different. We are in different situations. So uh, we'll actually touch that in a, in a bit. But if we start with the, just the technical things, not, not even the usability things, just, just technical things. So yeah, you can, you can get the whole website to the phone. But the thing is that still, there are problems with networks. Even if you are on a smartphone, you might not actually have a 3G connection all the time. You might have network outages. You might have a data plan that's costly. So if you get a website that's five megabytes, you might uh, not want to load them up all the time because it would just go over the plan and then you need to pay extra or something like that. And also it's about speed. So even if you have a 3G connection, it might be a bit sluggish every now and then and still like five megabytes, for example, or several megabytes could be a bit too much. Because over half, let's say 60% of the mobile users expect a mobile website to load within three seconds or less. It's actually pretty much the same as desktop usage. And this is a Google, uh, from a Google study. So it needs to be fast. They expect that it's fast if they, they can try it a couple of times. If something goes wrong, you see a blank page or it doesn't fully load, it takes a long time, you might just hit kind of a refresh, try again. But also, according to the same study, <coughs> people do it less than two times, so on, on average. So they will not tolerate it for too long a time if, if things don't work. Other thing is then, from a technical point of view, is that compared to the desktop world, as, as a web designer, you could, <coughs> you could argue that yeah, it's web is not really a single platform because uh, you have there, you have Safaris and Internet Explorers and Firefoxes and they have different versions, you have to need to support them. But really, if, if you look at mobile, web is just one single platform. Because in the mobile world, <coughs> it's, it's fragmented. As I mentioned earlier, there are billions of mobile phones, lots of them have internet capabilities, but the browser kind of landscape is just very, very fragmented. So a lot of different browsers, some of them support better features or kind of uh, more advanced features. Some of them don't support as many features. HTML5 is coming up. But, uh, I think the tagline here is uh, pretty good. So it's beta, of course. And um, yeah, HTML5 is kind of uh, progressing and leaps and bounds on the website. But on mobile, it's still uh, don't try to do anything uh, too complex with it. <coughs> and then you just have different platforms, so uh, different phones, use different browsers, so they basically, you can't do anything, anything heavy. And also, if you have a website with poor sloppy HTML, or you have some massive JavaScript or bad JavaScript, you can just as well to get, get the phone jammed, and, and uh, in some cases you might even have bugs <coughs> that the whole phone dies and you need to reboot it. The other thing that I personally, Kind of uh, my pet peeve. I personally hate this for the reasons mentioned before that you won't decide to be fast, you want it to load fast on mobile. You don't really want to wait a kind of uh, 15 or more seconds for it to load. Typically, if you go to a website, I think those who, who, of you who are Finnish, you know, think, you know, if you've been to movies, the local movie, movie chain. I just hate the website because it's, it's like, I don't know quite many, how many megabytes it is, and I've, I've tried many times on the go, take my mobile phone, like, uh, uh, we could actually go to movies, like, what's going on in there? I type thinking.com or .fi, and basically it just takes ages, and the pages, it's, it, it's even horrible in the kind of, uh, kind of, from web design point of view. The thing is that a lot of the, most of the websites, they have some kind of subdomain for the mobile site, and that's kind of good. But then in the end, like, I never remember, like, is it .mopi? There are some sites that are that. Some sites, 
expect that you put the slash mobile to get there. Some other sites using this address, they tell you that they have a mobile site, but they don't actually link to it. <laughs> and then some sites expect that you put the m dot and then the site domain there. But it's, it's kind of, I, I never remember like uh, which, which one I should choose. And I, I normally I just want the site fast, so I, I want the site. I don't want to load, load the full website if I'm on mobile. But like, okay, it's kind of a guessing game, like which, which one would it be? <coughs> so, if you go to the use cases then, so that was kind of the more technical side of things. So you might be commuting, you might be on the go, you might be sitting on your couch, or you might be in between. There are different use cases. So if you are on the couch or in commuting, you're kind of sitting still, you might have a bit more time. It still might be just a few minutes, but you have a bit more time. Uh, you can focus better, you might have two hands. But if you're on the go, I don't know, bicycling, walking, whatever, you might, have, might just have one hand to use. And the, of course, the usage is a lot, lot different. If you don't have a mouse, you have a phone, just one hand, and uh, well, good luck with that. You need to try to pinch and chew with just one hand. Well, it, you, you could do it, but it, it's not very convenient. <coughs> so, you need to really think about like what's the use situation, how we actually use it. So, the website should the mobile website should be designed in a way that you can actually easily, if you're walking, the screen might be tilting a bit, you need to be able to see clearly what's, what's in there. Any small text that you can't read it. And try tapping a link if it's, if it's really small. <coughs> also, the mobile users typically expect that they, they are used to certain UI, the user experience and the different paradigms that they use in the user interface. So Android has uh, some certain things that make it look Android. <coughs> some certain icons or way things are presented, how many, how many buttons are used, or back buttons, or search buttons. Then you have uh, Symbian. If you have the old mobile phones, you might have some uh, a lot less basic mobile internet browser. It works a lot, a lot differently. And uh, if, you don't actually, if you are not able to actually tap something, if it's not touch screen, then it's, it's very much different. <laughs> and then, of course, iPhone users have a, that might be iPhone users might be kind of the more even the most adapted to a single kind of user interface because all the Apple services, all the apps that people do, they typically use the same kind of uh, UI, same kind of buttons, same kind of menus. So kind of people expect the same when they're browsing the internet as well. So it gives you a good feeling, you kind of know, okay, yeah, this looks familiar, I know where things are, I know where I can go. And that's kind of one thing. And then of course Windows Phone 7 is coming up. That's uh, one type of new user interface there. <coughs> so if we take a closer look, this is one example that uh, yeah, is pretty, kind of, uh, pretty illustrative. So first of all, on a mobile site, typically it's best to keep people either browsing up or down. You don't really want to mess up with left or right because it's not how typically people are. They, on mobile, they just are used to browsing from up and, from up and down. And then we get to use cases. So if you are on the go, if you have, if you have a local business, that's a perfect example. If a local business, it's a grocery store or a cafe or Laundry. Pretty often, if people access your site via mobile, it's kind of a, you can monitor that, it depends on the business type, but quite often, if it's just kind of a local business site, you might expect that people actually might, are just nearby, a couple of blocks away, they're wondering what was the address, what was the phone number, would they have a, would, they, uh, would there be a time for a haircut? Like, typically, if you want to put the information in the beginning so that you can find a phone number to call, you can find the address, or it's easy to request information. And this probably like directions and opening hours, it might be not something you present the user on a website, normal desktop website right away. Because they 
they are looking for a different information. But the mobile, that's, that's very much how it is done, kind of uh, lay out the site. And going a bit more into detail, so on mobile, since you might be walking around or the screen is smaller, you want to put in more space there. It should be cleaner. Also, you might not want to present the whole navigation bar, for example, because it takes up almost all the space on the screen. So it might be better to somehow make it expendable. Depends, of course, a bit on the on the mobile. <coughs> if if uh, if the mobile browser supports JavaScript, then you can use an expandable menu like this. If it's just a basic browser, then of course you need to use a bit different different layout. <coughs> then uh, you want to use more space here. Just don't make it look simple. Active buttons big so that you can tap them. You can easily find them. And similar to the links. And also images. So in, in some cases, you might just uh, change your template in a way that uh, I know that there are some templates out there that include the mobile version. And uh, in many cases, they actually just resize the images when they are shown. They don't actually serve you smaller images, they just resize the images, images for the browser. So you still get the same, I don't know, couple of hundreds of kilobytes of images every time. And just adds the, more, adds the page size and the, it slows down the uh, loading time. And then it's typically, like as I said, I, when I'm accessing a site on a mobile, I typically expect that it loads up the mobile version of the site because it's faster, it's optimized. It might have the information lay, kind of uh, put in there in the way that I want. If I want the contact information, I can see it right there at the top. But then, of course, it is a good, uh, good way to also offer the users then the opportunity or the possibility to actually move easily to the full site if they want. If they're on an iPad or iPhone and for some reason they want the full site. For example, if there's some information that was left out from the mobile site. And uh, here's another interesting thing, kind of uh, <coughs> going then a bit on the, maybe the search engine optimization side. So Google, again from their stats, they have said that the average mobile search query is actually 15 characters long. So if you're optimizing the site <coughs> from an SEO perspective, then the keywords used are quite a bit different. And also many of the mobile uh, <coughs> mobile uh, <coughs> search engines they actually have a different different uh, database for the or different categorization for mobile sites and desktop sites. And they also use a, what, what they call predictive search, so they try to estimate based on the kind of uh, just based on the volume of different searches, and then based on the mobile site content, like they try to guess what the user is expecting. Because it's also been checked that when people are searching something on mobile, they typically don't go any deeper into the search pages than just, they might just check the first search page and then the second one, but they don't really go any deeper into that. They just want to find the information faster. So the SEO is also quite different. So keywords, <coughs> on mobile you don't have that many on the mobile sites. Also the location, the category, like what user is looking for, what handset is on, like are you using a Blackberry or Apple or Nokia, that might depend if you're looking something mobile specific. Also the, <coughs> I said the browser fragmentation is a really big thing. Device fragmentation, it also affects a lot of devices, low end, high end, something in between. Some devices with very bad box. So overall, there are, I think, quite a many different things you need to take into account for a mobile site. So this is pretty much what I want to share with you. One final thing that I'll just uh, add with us a bit, mobile tumor at the end. So this is a thing we've been working on with Uber uh, for some time, Uber uh, actually quite a, quite a long time. So it's, it's currently the biggest mobile extension for Tuma. And, uh, 
We are developing it actively forward. There are still, still a lot of things we want to do that are not possible yet, but it is the mo most popular mobile extension at the moment. And we've tried to implement the design kind of uh, in, with the mindset that it just works out of the box and mobilize your site according to what we feel that uh, as I went through the different kind of uh, best practices. We have a rather kind of small team for that, so I'm looking after the business side, we're looking after the product side, and then we have a technical lead in Russia actually. But we are also interested in uh, finding finding uh, collaborators and potential cooperation partners. But thank you. That was what I wanted to say to you.